So remember when you go to do this, that's how you recognize this. As soon as you see this, random sample, it didn't say choose one thing from your population. It said a number of things. Okay, so in this case, all you had to do was text it. Here's your text. And n times 2. Oops, oops, sorry, they weren't ours. That's wrong, wrong thing. Sorry. All you had to do here was find your mean, which is exactly the same. And find your standard error of the mean. Standard error of the mean is just your standard deviation over the square root of n. Okay. And remember, what did it do to this curve when we divided your standard deviation by the square root of n? What, what happens to your curve? It gets, it gets narrower. It pushes it in. It pushes this in. You get a narrower curve. Okay, now you don't have as much room for error in here because you're using a sample. Are you okay with this? Okay, all I'd ask you to do was find your mean, 39 and 40, I think, both of them. Find your mean and your standard error of the mean and do a sketch. If you give me a sketch of the original one or you gave me a sketch of the condensed one, either way, as long as you kind of have a feeling that, that when we do this, this guy's going to pull in a little bit. It's going to move in. Good. And when we do the test tomorrow, I'm going to set this up. 5.4 is going to be first. So you do all your things for 5.4, and then 5.5 comes in when you start testing. When it says to do a binomial test, the n times p, that's when you know you went to 5.5. That's your n times p thing. So this way you can kind of separate the first part from the second part. But again, recognize this when they say random sample. All right, now, this next one was a good one because it gave you a random sample of 36. And it asked you what was the probability, and make sure you give me probability statements, that your land was less than 1,400 and that your land was greater than 1,150. Make sure you write those probability statements because that's what's going to tell you where your area is, left or right. Now, here is your standard error of the mean right in here. Whether you put that in or you put it in there, whatever. But be careful. In your calculator, you need parentheses here if you're going to do the whole thing in one step. Because a couple of you have had the right formulas the other day, last week, and came up with the wrong answer. It was because you forgot your parentheses. If you do the first part and then you do the divide, then you need to stick that in parentheses. We need parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator. Now, what I was also saying is some of you guys put the first part in and hit enter, and then say divide. If you put the first part in, guys, and then you hit enter, and then you do this, you still have to have this in parentheses. Because otherwise you're going to say divide by 36, multiply by square root, if you don't have that. It'll divide, divide, actually. Now, when you're off the chart, again, use your sketch for placement. 1150 is less than 1400. Your z-score has to come out negative. It has to be a negative. So now when you're looking for greater than, you're about 100% of your graph. Your, your z-score is way off here somewhere. To the right, it's about 100%. To the left, it's about zero. We say approximately. Simone, was this the one you asked me? Did you not get a negative? You got the positive, right? Yeah. Remember, use your placement. It's always x minus the mean. However, if you use this, you can see, oh, this has to be negative. Smaller minus larger. Just see where it falls in your graph. Because all these guys are negatives over here. All these guys are positives. I think that makes a very big difference. Now, there's a difference between comparing this to your population. Remember when we did some of these? We said, what if I chose, chose one 
from your population. One piece of land. One piece of land from your population. Remember where we compared populations to samples? We just did your plain z-score. So we did, uh, let's say this, let's use, uh, let's use less than 1,400. So let's keep the same one. Okay, if we do this, remember the comparing your population to your sample? Because you might have to do that on your test. Okay, in this case, point four, oh, thank you. Point four, look at the difference between here and here. Look at the difference between that. There's a big difference using your sample than using your, your population. All right, so make sure you remember this is population, this is sample. Good? Good. Then I think I went right to the next part, right? Okay. Now how do we recognize this as your n times p? What usually gives this away? is a percent, percentage. Usually you have a percentage in here. So, yes? And there's a yes or a no question. Yes or no. Well, this one says determine if you can, yeah. On this one, you just have to do your test and approximate your normal distribution. So that's another way you can you test for this. Do, do I have a normal distribution? Binomial distribution? That's another one. Binomial says your success, your failure. There's your P, your Q. So as soon as you're looking at a binomial situation, there's your P and Q. So this guy just had us test. Test to see if we can use it. N times P is greater than or equal to 5. N times Q is greater than or equal to 5. We pass the test. What happens if we don't pass the test? That's it. You say you cannot use it. Does not pass, does not approximate a binomial distribution, a normal distribution. If it passes, we find the mean, which you already found, so that's kind of nice, and the standard deviation. So I was saying before on your test, guys, I'm going to put it in the same order, 5.4, then 5.5. So as soon as you see, does this approximate, does this binomial distribution approximate a normal one? You'll know you're back to this one. All you have to do is just test it. These guys, again, use your number line. This is your correction for continuity. Now, what I did on the test also, I put it in the same order. I had you do a test first so that you're in this mode. I had you correct a statement for continuity. Then I had you do a full problem, which obviously means that you have to do both things. You have to test it, and you have to correct it for continuity. So remember, use your number line. At least it's greater than or equal to. You drop it down. Lower end drops down 0.5. Whether you put the equal sign or not is fine with me. The less than or equal to, at most, this is the most you have. This is your high end. Bring this up. We will never hit 36.5. The first number we hit is 36 which is the number we want. When it's equal to, remember you have to expand your bar. Good, these are your correction for continuity. And the last one was also another equal. Okay. And the last problem you had was using all of this together. Be careful in your wording. 65% of, this is the age of children, 12 to 17. This is your people that you select, 45. That's the end. <coughs> and after he or she keeps part of their savings account, blah, 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 blah. Determine first, here's your job, binomial distribution. Binomial says P, Q. So therefore, you have to test, make sure it passes, find your mean, Find your standard deviation. If you want to do your z-score, 
before you even started, where would be your mean and your standard deviation? You didn't find them yet. You wouldn't have them. So that's a good clue. I have to go back and do those. I want these statements, guys. Make sure you give me a probability statement. At most, see money in your pocket. If you have at most $20, we go shopping. I say, can you lend me some money? You say, I have at most 20 That's the most you have. That and less. So that's an upper limit. Raise it 0.5. Because we'll never hit 20.5 because you only carry down the bill. So the first number we hit is 20. And again, make your sketch. See which way you need to go. The rest of your D-square falls into place. Are we only going to have one problem like that? Because I'm just so long, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, well, I, I kind of broke it down to first do a test to see can you use this. That's one question. Mm -hmm. Another question is correct the statement for continuity. There's two statements to correct for continuity. And then there's two of these problems. Okay. So there's not like a lot of work the whole time. I kind of like maybe go into the boat. Yeah. Okay. I kind of have to.